Hey guys, it's time for the June 2013 Limit Theory development update. It was really a great month. June was awesome. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on with LT right now, especially moving towards the uh, the full-blown universe simulation with, with deep AI. <clears throat> that That's all progressing really well. Unfortunately, there's a lot of internal and conceptual work, so there's not, there's not much to show um, on the AI or sim front yet. Uh, however, I do still have lots of stuff to show, and I think it's going to be a pretty exciting demo. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm going to start with some graphics because everybody loves graphics, and we kind of always start with graphics. So let's take a look at the ship that I'm flying right now. Uh, and pay particular attention to the texture on it. That's really what I want to demo because the texture uh, That plating has come a long long way this month. I spent a solid day or so just reworking that algorithm And I'm actually really pleased with how it came out. I really like this this plating texture and In my opinion, it's pretty much where it needs to be So I'm happy with that the structure of the ship still is placeholder, so don't pay much attention to that, but look at the texture and the shading on it. Of course, you can't really look at that texture without also looking at the lighting and the, the metallic effect, as well as like the HDR and bloom on it, and that too has come a long way this month. Hope you can sort of see that the lighting effects are just more natural and more realistic. <clears throat> watching the sun reflect off of the metal. It's quite a nice effect. So yeah, you know, graphics always getting better, always will be getting better, but um, ship textures I think are, are looking good. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna start moving here. So uh, this is this is a pretty massive ship that I'm flying. In case you haven't noticed, um, so I mean the thing is like every demo up until now has been like me just dinking around in this tiny little fighter, which is totally stupid. When in the Kickstarter campaign I was all like, oh yeah, massive ships and massive fleet and stuff, and then like here I am in the video with this little fighter and you guys are like, what is he doing? So I, I actually pulled out the big guns for this demo. This is a battleship. It's not the biggest ship that you can get in LT, but it is close. So this is this is uh, a ship to be taken seriously. Hopefully you can get a sense of that scale and see that it is a pretty big ship. I got a little, little squadron of bombers flying around me for scale comparison. We'll try to get a better sense of scale here. Zoom in on the bombers. So th these are bombers, mind you, a little bigger than fighters. Still, you can see they're they're tiny compared to my battleship. They're also highly incompetent. I don't know why they're getting that close. Someone should have failed them for basic flight, but we'll worry about that later. So yeah, um, pretty pretty nice scale difference there, I would say. Hopefully that fulfills your need for piloting epic ships. Though again, it does get bigger than this. But this is a capital ship. Serious business. Um, but there is another reason that I picked a capital ship for this demo. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and hide in this asteroid field because we're, we're going to do some pretty serious stuff. Stuff that some people might not like. Um, yeah, so uh, the rest of what I want to talk about for this demo is production, which has been conspicuously absent from pretty much all discussions up until recently. Uh, if you read the devlogs, then you know I've been working on production-related stuff recently. And when I say production, I mean like kind of the LT crafting system, if you will, which is very much going to be a part of the game. And that's what I'm going to show today. So... We're going to go over here in this uh, asteroid field and we're going to make some weaponry. 
I'm also showing off the dust because everybody knows by now that I have this serious thing for, for dustiness and I improved the graphics on that front this month as well. And uh, I know people make fun of me for this love of dust, but you guys are just going to have to deal with it. There are black systems in LT, as I keep saying, there are clear black systems. And I'm not going to show them in the videos because I don't like them. Oh well. It's pretty darn scenic though if you ask me. I don't know why you would want black space compared to this, but you know, to each his own. I'm just gonna get some views of this. Take in this moment alone in the asteroid field. Well, not really alone. Maybe a little too aggressive on those uh, god rays. I'll turn those down, don't worry. All right, so let's get into some production. I'm gonna bring up the new ship viewer interface. Obviously this looks a lot different from from what it used to look like. You've still got your your 3D view, your overlay kind of thing, and you've got your cargo and power. So all the interfaces are the same, it's just they're arranged in this kind of side sliding folder. Um, but the hard points are vastly different, so that's this is what we're going to be talking about mostly. Um, you can see the hard points are now kind of first class widgets. They they take up more space. Um, they're scrollable. And you really need that for this battleship because, yeah, I mean, it has a lot of hard points, as you can see. Probably not even enough, actually. But um, So the thing is, with hard points, I wanted them to be customizable. Like, I wanted it to be where you could have the ability to edit the settings of a specific hardpoint based on what kind of uh, what kind of thing is equipped. So like a, a certain type of weapon might expose a certain configuration option or like you can tweak your sensors or thrusters or you know that kind of thing. And that's going to be particularly important when we start doing production because this is where we're going to manage the production um, is from the hardpoint interface. So uh, you can see I've got these missile launchers installed and they expose a uh, a munition slot which is I could just drop the munition that I want to fire there like the type of missile that I want to fire and um, that would load it into the missile launcher and that's how I would specify that I want to launch a particular type of missile this is all um, very basic right now there's there's not enough information on this interface but it's actually new this week so uh, still very much a work in progress Okay, so um, looking at my cargo, we kind of have a problem, which is that I don't have, I don't have a missile. I don't have any missiles to load my missile launchers, but I do have a blueprint and some raw materials and a construction module. Hmm, wonder what we can do with that. Maybe we can make something of that. I would really like to have some missiles, um, but I have this blueprint, so that's kind of interesting. And um, now I would like to draw your attention to this hard point. It says industrial. Well, that's interesting. We've never seen an industrial hard point until now. And that's because industrial hard points are reserved for really big ships or space stations or planetary locations. They are the biggest hard points. And they're where you're going to do all of your crafting related things in LT. Um, they're where you'll do refining of ores research of new technologies and construction of equipment and items so this is where you're going to mount all the the heavy duty modules including the construction module and that's exactly what we're going to do today so you can see if i click the construction module the industrial hardpoint is lighting up indicating maybe i can do something there and indeed i can so i just equipped it um, do note that that was completely cheating because you're not allowed to equip hard points in space. You have to be docked to change out your hard points, but we're cheating for the sake of this demo. Oh well. So I've got my construction module installed, and you can see it exposes a configuration sub widget. So I'll check that out, and it has a blueprint slot inside it. Okay, that's a. Uh, much like the munition slot that my missile launcher exposes, 
except it suggests that I should drop some kind of blueprint there. Lucky me, I actually have a blueprint. And when I click it, the blueprint slot lights up. So I'm going to see what happens when I drop it. Oh, very interesting. Suddenly, I got a lot more information. So now you can see it's showing me for this specific blueprint what I need, what kind of raw materials I need in order to construct one batch of whatever this firefly thing is. And it tells me that I'm going to be constructing 16 units at a time, and it'll take me 20 seconds to produce one batch. Well, that sounds kind of promising. I, uh, I don't know what a firefly is, but maybe it's a missile with any luck. So I'm going to try producing it. So my construction module is now running, and I am manufacturing stuff aboard my battleship. Cool, cool stuff. Almost done. And there we go. Look at my inventory. You'll see I have acquired 16 fireflies. I still don't know what they are. The icon isn't very helpful because it's placeholder. And um, there's no tooltip because that's not present yet. But maybe it's a munition. Maybe it's a missile. Ah, the munition slot lights up. That would suggest that I can actually fire this thing out of my missile launcher, which would be really nice because I don't have any other missiles. Oh, would you look at that? That is all extremely convenient, how I was able to produce that and equip it, but you know what? Coincidences happen. And now it looks like I've got a loaded missile launcher. You can see it disappeared from my inventory um, because it got chambered in my launcher. And um, presumably I'm now ready to hurt someone, which may or may not be good considering I'm surrounded by allies. But I guess someone here is just going to have to take one for the team so that I can test out my, uh, my new constructed weaponry. So let's take this guy. And I'm going to see what happens. Oh, boy. Oh, yep. Yeah. They're missiles. They're definitely missiles. Not only are they missiles, they appear to be guided missiles, which happen to be new this month. Actually happen to be new like in the past two days. Very nice. So, all right, this is kind of cool what's happening right here because, you know, we built these missiles aboard our ship. This is like homegrown ammunition, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool concept to, like, build your own missiles. At least that excites me because I'm definitely a missile kind of guy. So, yeah, here I am attacking my own assets again, but sometimes you just got to do that for the sake of demonstration. Oof, he's he's almost gone. I think one more and he'll be uh he'll be out of commission. Oh oh yes, caught him. <laughs> that was kinda cool. Very nice. So I got my little production set up here. Can make some missiles, can shoot some people with them. Producing missiles in the dust field. Fun times. Fun times in LT. Yep. So, uh, I'm going to set it on loop and just load up on these missiles because it looks like, coincidentally, I have a lot of raw material to make them. wonder how that happens. Battleship. Very exciting. There we go. And I'm going to load them up. And do not mind that discontinuity. I had a little bit of a crash. But we are back online now. And I am going to continue loading up. That's, that's going to be a lot of missiles. I'm just churning them out here. They're pretty fast to produce, though, since, I mean, they're just missiles. I imagine it would take a good bit longer to produce, like, a, a piece of high-end 
weaponry or something like that. It's certainly going to be longer than 20 seconds. And now imagine, imagine if you actually could mine and refine and process these resources aboard the same ship. You could actually have like the whole production chain set up. Never have to leave your ship. That could be cool. That's a lot of missiles. That's what I like to see. Man, I'm just... My ship is huge compared to them. It's kind of sad. Um, while I'm destroying people, I, I just want to mention that another thing is, that happened this month is that the game uh, received its first port to Linux, actually. Um, and so that's exciting for me because it was actually easier than anticipated. So uh, it's running smoothly on Linux now. And uh, that probably doesn't excite too many people, but it, it should excite Mac users as well because that means that Mac is not far off since the engine is now officially multi-platform. Um, it shouldn't be much harder to port it to Mac as soon as I get a Mac, which will be soon. So that's exciting. And uh, as you can see, I'm still nailing people with these homegrown missiles. In fact, uh, you can see there are missiles orbiting a guy. Uh, <laughs> missiles in a stable orbit. <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> that technology is only a few days old, so don't judge me. It'll get better. I feel like I say that phrase a lot. It'll get better. That may, that may or may not be a good thing. So this is a nice, scenic, peaceful moment destroying my friends with my own constructed ammunition in an asteroid field. It's a classic sci-fi moment. The kind of which you will be having all the time in LT. And uh, I suppose I suppose that's it. So Thank you for watching. If you like missiles and you like producing missiles, then this has been a good day for you, hopefully. It's been a good day for me. And uh, tune in next month to, to see what kind of excitement we'll have then. Thanks for watching. <laughs>